Hey, what's up? It's Comic95, the Savior, and I kind of want to talk to you guys about cancel culture, something that people don't really talk about much on YouTube unless they like specifically want to call out another person, but I feel like it really doesn't get talked about in the so-called J-Vlogger community, and I don't want to keep the topic on just people that are here in Japan, but like YouTube, period. And this is something that people aren't going to understand about me, which I know it kills people that don't like me. Because the real issue here, I don't feel like it has anything to do with、um, people really wanting you to correct yourself or learn your lesson. But I feel like people have literally like, turned this whole cancel culture thing and movements and whatnot into becoming more of a, I don't know how to explain it, but like a jealousy type thing, a torture type thing where. They don't want you to learn from your mistakes or to correct yourself or anything else. The goal is just to publicly humiliate you. People want to see blood. They want you to live a life of being, I don't know, shamed or bashed or hated. And no matter what you do, you can't move on from it. And I think the thing that makes this even more difficult and bogus, I feel, is that the people that get hurt the most from this are people, of course, you can't help your age. But people that were born like early 2000s or earlier in particular, like especially people that were born in like the 70s, 80s, 90s. And this is not to excuse crap behavior, but I feel like a lot of people don't take into consideration what times were like back then. Like the way that people functioned, thought what we laughed at was totally different from what is acceptable now. It's a mixture of education, cultural differences, a lack of social media. And it's like, it's not fair. Because if you were to, if you were to follow even myself around, like prior to the days of social media, it should even now. And every single little thing that I did were to be scrutinized, everybody could see it and hear it and read about it. Especially if you have information from back, like when you were a teenager or minor or anything else, and like nothing is private, everything's public. You can pick apart my entire life and find bad things that I did or bad things that I said, whether they be racist, sexist, or even homophobic. And nobody wants to talk about those things. But it's like, can we acknowledge the fact that times have changed and things that are no longer acceptable were totally normal, expected, and acceptable back in the day? So, for example,、um, I gave this. Sorry, my phone's blown up. I gave this example before, but it's like, especially when it comes to things like dealing with you know, the LGBT, etc. If we were to all be real, even people that you know, identify as being gay, bisexual, or anything else like that, if you went to school in the 90s, 80s, even before that, especially if you went to school in like, you know, 90s, 80s, early 2000s, we all know that you know, being gay was not acceptable. Like, if you were gay, you were in the closet, you denied it, you lied about it, you probably bullied other people who were. I definitely had friends who were you know, closeted. I didn't know they were gay, but there were rumors about them being gay, and they, they bullied other people even when they came out themselves that were gay. So, my point is this people, you know, we said things like, you know, homo, we, you know, call people faggots, and just anything else you could think of. I'm not, you know, sure, c o d e I'm saying exactly how it is. And with that said, it's like, okay. Things that were okay and acceptable to do back then are no longer okay now. And I am not saying those people don't need to pay some sort of whatever for what they've done in the past. But I am saying it's like you can't judge people back in the day the same way you would judge them now. In fact, if that were the case, then I hope that you're not married to somebody that's, you know, white. I hope that you don't have any white friends because you'd be very disappointed. While they might be your friend and accepting of you now, the reality is, especially as an older adult, the people that you're friends with, you're dating or married to, they more than likely had racist beliefs before them. There's people subscribed to my channel right now, and you probably hated black people before you met me. Now, I can choose to be bitter and be angry at you for feeling that way, but the reality is, it's not entirely our own fault. It's the environment that we grew up in. If you're living with parents who are racist and have negative things to say about black people, you watch the media and everything's negative and bad about, I mean, what's going to happen? You're going to feel a negative way. I use myself as an example. Growing up, even though I did have some experience and some exposure to dealing with Asians, my experiences with Asian people were not very good and they were very limited. I knew very few Asian people personally, and most of the people that I knew, they were biracial. So, for example, there was a family at my church where, you know, they were half Japanese, half black, etc., and I knew them, but my experience with dealing with, you know, Chinese, Korean people, Vietnamese people, everyday life was rude, racist, stereotyping you, following you throughout the store, you know, I don't know, serving you expired. Old dirty food being rude to you, you know, the Chinese see through kitchens. If you live in Chicago, you know what I'm talking about. 
Vietnamese, Vietnamese and Korean people at the nail salons. Okay, your experiences with Asians are not going to be good. So a mixture between what you're dealing with in real life, what you see on TV, what you see in media, you are naturally going to have these stereotypes about them. You're not going to think of, you know, you're not going to think highly. And I'm not excusing it. I'm simply explaining it does take some unlearning and re-educating. So if you were to go around and spend, you know, your whole time looking for reasons to hate somebody, looking for reasons to cancel someone, etc., you can easily find them. I think it's really dumb. And even dumber thing is that nobody wants to talk about. People literally only do this to people like once they become big. Like they look for people that are successful and big, whether it be blogger, YouTuber, whatever the crap is. And then after you get to a certain point, people start going on a witch hunt. They look for reasons for everyone to hate you. And no matter how much you apologize for what you said or did, no matter how much you prove that you've changed, people want to see you burn. And y'all, y'all are not going to like my example. But a prime example that I want to give is two people. Shane Dawson and Jeffree Star. I know, I know, I know. Black people. Hold on. Hear me out here. Those are two examples. Now, Jeffree Star is on a little bit of a different level. But for someone like Shane Dawson, I can say for myself, he's still my favorite YouTuber, to be honest with you. I enjoyed and laughed at his portrayals of black people when he did his Shanae skits, etc., I honestly found them funny when he made fun of Nicki Minaj. And I'm a huge, you know, I'm a barb. But with all of that stuff said, it's like, okay, times were different back then. I loved America's Next Top Model. I remember watching the episode where they had to, you know, take on another race and they were being painted. And I've seen all of that stuff. And it's not that I agree with everything that was going on. But I recognize that was a different time from where we are now. In fact, a lot of people that are on their high horse doing these witch hunts, they're guilty of saying and doing the same stuff too. But there was no camera recording what they said, did, no record of what they wrote about. There's no, you know, nobody to prove that they're just as bad as these people that they're trying to call out. And the problem that I have isn't just people being called out, but it's like, when is it enough? When do we stop? When does someone saying that I'm sorry, educating themselves and changing, when are they able to redeem themselves and for their past to be forgiven and forgotten at that point? And it's like, forget about just even the forgotten part. It's like, people can apologize. And like, we as a community, not just black people, talking people in general, we don't forgive them. The goal is to ruin their entire career. There is no redemption. And it's like, if no matter what I do, you're not going to forgive me. Why should I change then? Like, think about that. If I'm going to be labeled as a racist, sexist, homophobic, no matter what I say and do, why should I want to change, educate myself or anything? Because now you're encouraging me to only want to say I'm sorry and pretend like I'm a part of this movement or whatever in order to, you know, maintain my coins to make money. It's no longer a genuine apology. I'm no longer doing genuine research. And to play devil's advocate, I will admit that as a black person myself, it does really hurt me. Every time that I found that I really like a YouTuber or somebody on Instagram, or I don't really use TikTok, but now a lot of people that I watch on Instagram, I find out, oh, they actually are from TikTok, but I only know of them from YouTube or Facebook. Not YouTube, but you know, Facebook or Instagram, showing my age. <laughs> but um, yeah, like I think about Only Jayus, and I think about H2O Delirious, and it really, really hurts me. Like when I see people like that, and then like Jeffree Star and Shane Dawson, I love them, to be honest. I know that for a lot of black people, it's gonna make you cringe, but I like Jeffree Star's rich personality. It was funny to me. I found it comical. And when I saw the old footage of him, you know, calling people niggers and stuff like that, it hurt, because I was like, wow. Like every time that I like a white YouTuber or whatever, I find out they have a racist past. They were using the N-word. They felt this way about black people. They said this inside of a forum. I ran a chat and even like Doja Cat, etc. Like, I really loved her. I loved her crazy personality. You know, she she's really a biracial woman. I consider her to be black. I don't give a crap. But, you see what I'm trying to say? It's like, no matter what you say and do, people don't really forgive you. They want to ruin your career. And don't get me wrong, I'm not excusing their behavior, their actions. I'm not giving them a pass by saying, oh, they were young and times were different. Even though those two things I do think should be taken into consideration. But rather, my point is, I don't care if you do it at the age of 60. Why can't we forgive people? Why can't people do things to redeem themselves? Why are we busy trying to call out other people for this crap that they've said and done that's bad? And we don't look at ourselves because you're an effing liar. If you went, if you are my age, you definitely called people gay. You used the term faggot. You said racist shit. You did bad stuff. I don't care what race you are. We all did it. You might not necessarily bully somebody relentlessly. 
but you laughed at the jokes, you participated in it, and you probably said it, wrote it, rather be out of anger, whatever. And even if you didn't do that, and you were a little goody-goody two-shoe, because really, for the most part, I was. I never went around bullying people that were gay or anything like that. But we all sung songs. We all loved Lil Wayne. One of the most famous lines, saying things like, no homo, and calling people, you know, faggots, and gay, you know, just all type of crap like that. So again, it's not to excuse it, but rather to say, we all did this stuff, so why do we feel like we're better than another person of course we get into a different field when we start talking about legitimate racist slurs versus just things based off of sexuality or whatever or dealing with you know the con the concept of um cultural appropriating and being disrespectful to cultures and things like that but even things like that i mean come on we all did the little native american little crap like that and wearing the native american outfits and it was a different time those were common costumes now it's hard to come across a costume like that inside of, you know, a Halloween shop, I imagine. But you see what I'm saying? Times were different back then. So if you're going to pull up pictures of white families dressed like Native Americans for Halloween to show that they're racist and bad, that's unfair. Times were different. Likewise, if you were to comment on the fact, you know, of white people, you know, talking about how, you know, your hair looks like a bush or, you know, you're cute for a black girl type stuff. Just because somebody says or does something that is racist doesn't necessarily mean that they are. I mean, it doesn't change the fact that what they said was racist. Don't get me wrong. But you have to consider the time that they came from. What was appropriate to say back then. Things were different. People got educated and they learned to move forward. So, it's hard to explain. I'm not saying it the best way possible. My point is this. Like, what is our real goal in this? What is our purpose? Our, is our purpose to really educate people? Or is it to make ourselves feel better? By saying that what we've done, our sin is lesser than theirs, basically. Because that's what I really feel like it comes down to. Like like I said, don't get me wrong. I understand why racist things hurt you. Because like I gave an example, that really hurt me. But the way that I see it, it's okay. You get on camera, you apologize, you address what you did. I believe you deserve to be forgiven. As long as you're authentic and you've truly made corrections and changed. But honestly, I even feel like then, I feel like for a lot of stuff that people are even apologizing for, it's like, why are we holding people accountable for things that they said and did 20, 30, 40 plus years ago when everybody said, did and thought these things? And we don't hold ourselves accountable, our friends, our family members, whatever. Like, it's literally just a matter of trying to find people and making ourselves angry towards them for no reason, instead of judging people based off of how and who they are today and now. And the reality is, while you might not find certain things funny, other people do. Not everybody has the same super sensitive, you know, thin skin and doesn't have the same, you know, whatever, uptight sense of humor. What you might not find funny, another person does. For example, I love Dave Chappelle. One of his very first skits, I think it was his very first skit. I actually bought the DVD set before it became, you know, a cool thing for everybody to know Dave Chappelle again all of a sudden. I bought his DVD set, I want to say back in like 2012 or 2013 before he returned back to comedy. And I bought, I think it was at Walmart for like $30, $40 or whatever. I don't even know if you can buy that again or even if it's available for that price. But I bought the entire Chappelle Show series up until that point. In one of his very first shows, I believe it was the first episode, he did a skit in which he was a black white supremacist. And it made a lot of people angry. They did not find it funny. And it's like, okay, what you don't find funny, someone else does. It's a joke. Now, of course, there's a difference between a joke and somebody legitimately being racist. And we ain't finna go into that for this video. But my point is that I feel like people are so busy trying to be sensitive and trying to feel like they're better than other people and call other people out. That now people don't even take into consideration that just because you don't find something funny doesn't mean that other people, you know, have to feel the same way. They don't find it funny either. They think that it's racist or it's whatever else too. And beyond that, when people do legitimately racist and bad things, like you have to think to yourself, are we going to forgive people for being racist? Because otherwise, how do we move forward if we decide if you say or do something racist, you are now inside the forever box of canceled people and you can never redeem yourself you're never allowed to get a job you can't return to youtube no brand sponsorships no friends no nothing how are we any better than those people then if we're not giving them the chance to correct themselves educate them etc and i really think back to like some videos that i've watched recently over like the past couple of years in which i saw a video of this white man who was i think he was like a nazi or some sort of like white supremacist and he had all these like super racist tattoos And he went to prison for, I think, a hate crime or whatever. And they were really bogus and petty. They made his parole officer a dark-skinned black woman. And he couldn't understand it. But for some reason, she decided to kill him with kindness. She was nice to him. She was loving towards him. And her kindness to that man changed his life. He became best friends with her even after he got off of parole. It's nothing sexual. He went to go get his tattoos removed. And... 
it it was really powerful to watch. And for another black person watching it, they feel angry, disgusted, think he's an awful person, which of course he was. But it's like, if we don't love these people, listen to these people, forgive these people, how are they ever going to change? It will forever be a them and that society where we have the perfect people on their pedestal of, I've never done a racist thing in my life. And then we have the bad people that have said and done bad and racist things that, sure, they can apologize and beg on their hands and knees, but we play God and act like we can't forgive these people and what they did is unforgivable and they haven't learned their lesson and we have to destroy their YouTube career and go up to their job and let everybody know this person's a racist. And again, don't get me wrong, I'm not talking about people that are continuing to do bad, racist, mean, bullying things. I'm talking about people that have done bad things, have been called out for it, properly apologized, have educated themselves. At what point do we decide enough is enough? Let's move on. That's my point. Not to mention that a lot of us that are angry about certain things, we're busy trying to, you know, police people and judge people. And then it's like, you all have family members that are, you know, immers. And I mean that in both senses, both touching people and ending people's lives and thieves and everything else. And you wouldn't want them to be judged permanently. You believe they deserve second and third chances. You believe they deserve the ability to redeem themselves. But you don't even extend that to other people. You believe that once these other people, they do something bad or wrong, they should be punished for the rest of their lives. Like I've seen crazy stuff with people trying to get people canceled on YouTube and it works. People get bullied off of the internet. And don't get me wrong, I believe there are some really you know, big jerk people out there that kind of deserve it. But at the end of the day, it's like no matter how bad something is someone does, I believe if someone is willing to turn around and change themselves and correct themselves and apologize and show true remorse, they deserve forgiveness just like how you do. There's plenty of dirty and dark secret things that you've done that we'll never know about to this day. And you feel like you deserve forgiveness. You would want forgiveness. If that was your child or your mother or your father, your family member, your best friend, you would want them to be forgiven too. So again, I'm talking about people that have you know gone through the process of acknowledging and accepting what they've done wrong and have, you know, reached out for it. And instead of getting forgiveness, we're just like, nope, you're canceled. We're done with you forever. Screw you. We don't watch your channel. You know, let's start a, you know, cancel, hate watch party, you know, watch you drop on subscribers. And it's really so sad and scary seeing how easy it is to manipulate people online. Like, I see it with myself, for example. And somebody that I really, like, um, felt for with this was James Charles in particular. And I know you guys are oh, look what he did, etc. But the problem that I have with James is that a lot of the hate that he gets nowadays is based off the fact that he keeps talking to people that are, you know, straight, allegedly, as well as people that are underage. And while those two things seem very understandable, it's like, okay... How many, like ladies, be real, straight ladies in particular, how many men reach out to you and ask you how old you are before they slide in your DMs? They normally assume that you're an adult automatically. They have no, they have no idea whether you're a student or not. In fact, I imagine a lot of high school girls nowadays even have the same problems that I did. I told you guys before I even got to junior high school, when I was in sixth grade, I had grown men hitting on me and talking to me sexually. Because they didn't know how old I was. They just assumed that I was an adult. I stopped growing at 11. I've been 5 foot 4 wearing a size 11 shoe since I was 11. Size, size 11 shoe. Size 7 shoe since I was 11 years old. Nothing has changed. In fact, the only thing that grew after that was my breasts. But even in 6th grade, I had C-cup breasts. Which is more than a lot of grown women have nowadays. I argue even most women have nowadays. I have full breasts. I had an adult's body and I wasn't even a teenager. Now, thank, thankfully and lucky for me, social media wasn't nearly as big as it is nowadays. And there was no Instagram or Snapchat back then. But things would have arguably been a lot worse. Arguably been a lot worse. And I imagine that things are like that for a lot of girls that are that age and younger. It's understandable that you can easily talk to somebody that is underage, especially if somebody's baiting you by sliding in your DMs or responding to your message. And again, I'm not trying to take accountability off of these people, but rather to say it's understandable. In fact, if people were to be honest with themselves, you as a man have likely talked to a girl that was underage not knowing it or you did know. You might have a brother, a father, a family member that did the same thing. And so this is not to excuse it, but rather to say, how are we pointing fingers when we do the exact same thing ourselves or have made the same mistakes ourselves? Do you see what I'm trying to say? And then I'll also keep it real. While I'm not excusing adults talking to underage people, we don't give teenagers enough accountability as we should. When you're a teenager, you are old enough to understand that you shouldn't be talking to adults 
or baiting them either. Likewise, as an adult, being the older person, you should not be talking to or baiting or grooming underage people. But the reality is, a lot of young people, they purposefully try to talk to adults and celebrities because they want money, they want fame, they want attention. And honestly, they even have sick parents that are encouraging them to do this stuff. That they can file lawsuits to make money off of it. And it's really messed up, but it happens. And this is a topic nobody wants to talk about, but look at R. Kelly's situation. People are so fixated on what R. Kelly did. Not that it wasn't wrong, but it's like, okay, why are we not holding the parents accountable? How as a parent do you drop your child off with a grown ass man and think nothing of it? Would they have done it if you were not R. Kelly? No. They did it because they wanted money and they saw it as being worth it. They got their payout and when the money stopped coming in, now you want to report him. And I'm not blaming the children for it. I'm blaming the parents. But you see how there's no accountability being taken there? It's just on the one person. So... This can all go off to a whole other direction. I'm not trying to get into all of that crap. All I'm trying to say is this is like... What is our goal? Is, is our purpose to really correct people? Or is it to decide there's a them and us in this world? There's the perfect people that have done wrong, but nobody has seen it yet. So we're going to pretend like we're perfect. And we're going to judge and demonize other people. And then when you get put into that little demonized cancel island box, you can't come out of it. And I honestly feel that way strongly about, you know, James Charles. Because even before this new thing with him talking to minors, the big situation that was going on back then was, oh, you know, talking to straight people, whatever. And it's like, he's definitely not the first, last, or only person. Because I have gay friends that personally like more masculine men. I'm pretty sure that's a pretty understood thing amongst gay people. I imagine lesbians feel the same way about that too. And so it's really funny that people like pick and choose who can and can't do stuff. So if you're famous and you say that you find yourself more attracted to people that identify as being straight, you're seen as predatory. But if you're not famous, it's okay to say that and people understand it. Nobody thinks poorly of you. And then especially with them being young, like he, did, he didn't know better. And I'm not a James Charles fan, don't get me wrong. I did like him, and sadly, I just started watching him, I think, either, what, a year ago or months before all of that crap went down, which really sucked because every time I start liking somebody, a scandal happens, unfortunately. Either either they die or a scandal takes place or I found out they did some racist crap and they've been canceled from the internet. So, yeah, it really sucks because, I mean, like I said, I believe that people deserve to be able to redeem themselves and that people make mistakes. Some people make them more than once and they have to, you know, learn a lesson, but I don't see how bullying people and canceling them helps resolve that problem i do believe people that have decided they're going to stand their ground and they're not going to apologize and they don't want to change then fine yeah they deserve to be canceled but the problem is i never see that happen the people that get truly canceled are always the ones that have tried to change themselves tried to make corrections have tried to redeem themselves and everyone has decided nope you're in you're on cancel island we're not going to let you off of it so it's not going to help this world And ultimately, it's just extremely hypocritical because while you're busy pointing your fingers and judging other people, if people were able to see all of the messed up crap that you've done, you would be under Cancel Island. And so you really just have to tell yourself that you have to be able to forgive people and move on because I think about that for myself too. Like I've talked about this before on my channel and it does kind of bother you, but when I find myself dating Japanese people, even being friends with them, I think about my female friends all the time. The reality is, prior to meeting me, they more than likely either said some racist things about my own race or nationality, or they believed some of those things. And instead of being angry and bitter and trying to find reasons to hate these people and cancel them, I see it as a learning opportunity. I'm grateful that I had the chance to meet you and change your perspective of what you probably thought about Americans or foreign women or black women, etc. And that now you can educate other people and tell them, well, I dated an American girl or I dated a black woman. She wasn't like that. She didn't do X, Y, and Z. Now you've been informed. I watched a video that was really interesting that really touched me and she didn't want to be seen on camera. But it was a Japanese woman that was talking about how awful she felt because she knows that growing up, going to school, she said that she had said some really bad things about dark-skinned people. And they weren't talking about black people in particular. They were just talking about other, you know, foreigners, period. They were really talking about dark-skinned Asians. And I appreciated her honesty because I've never heard, even, if she wanted, even although she did not want to be seen on camera, I really respected that. 
because something that most people can't do. Instead, people pretend and act, you know, they're on their high horse. They pretend like they've never said anything racist. They've never felt poorly about foreigners. They play dumb with you and act like, oh, really? There's bad Japanese people? Oh, I'm so sorry. And so it was refreshing to see that honesty. And I feel like, honestly, we need to do that with, as black people, white people, too. I'm not saying that... We, that people are deserving of forgiveness, but we're not deserving of it either. Because the way that God sees it, all sin is equal. And we've all done messed up stuff too. So it's like, if we can't forgive other people, the, God's not going to forgive us. Like, if we can't forgive other people, then what's going to happen when we're in a situation where we deserve forgiveness? Like, you see how hypocritical that is? You want to hold grudges and you don't want to give people the ability to redeem themselves. You don't want people to be able to explain themselves. You want to go on witch hunts to judge people and hate them for just whatever reason. Mostly out of jealousy because normally it never happens to regular people. People always want to go on witch hunts for people that are famous. People get up so big, they get such a big following, and then people try to find reasons to hate and dislike them. And then suddenly everybody has this new, you know, new hobby and pastime of wanting to find reasons to cancel someone. And that's why I said, like, I never want my channel to be controlled out of fear or other people. That's why I leave my videos up. I'm never going to take down my video about, you know, not liking Asian men or why I don't date black men or talk about black hairstyles. I I'm literally going to keep all of that stuff there because I don't take back what I had to say. People that are watching my content to understand, they get it. If you're watching my content to hate me, to dislike me, you're not going to get it because you're not going to listen to me. It doesn't matter what I say. You've already decided I'm not being the robot that you wanted me to be. So no matter what I say or do, you're not going to like me. And it's just that simple. And so it's like, you could spend your whole life being afraid to be yourself, being afraid to have your own opinion, being afraid to share your truth, and being controlled by money. Because that's exactly what YouTube is. If you want your channel to be big here, you want to make friends in the J-Vlogger community, the YouTube community, anything else, you have to put on the same front and show. People don't want to collaborate with you when you talk about negative things. People don't want to be your friend when you're too honest, too outspoken. They want you to all have the same ideas. Everybody that's on YouTube in the J-Vlogger community, you have to speak positively about Japan. And if you're going to say anything bad about Japan, it has to be you talking about, you know, I don't know, being touched on a train or about how you dated a guy and his family didn't accept you. Like, it has to be something like that. You can't go off of that, you know, branch. You have to stay on, um, there's designated bad things you can say about Japan. And if you go outside of that topic, nobody wants to associate with you anymore because it naturally attracts haters. As a black woman, people don't want to hear me say anything bad about white men or Asian men because it bursts the bubbles that, you know, these black women have because they want to date outside their race and they recognize they don't have a lot of options with black men. So for them, it only makes more sense. I mean, th there's less black men. There's less black men that are eligible, you know, suitors for getting married that match your criteria, etc. It only makes sense to diversify, you know, your dating portfolio, date people of other races. And so when you as a black woman get on here and you talk about issues with dating outside your race, it angers them. And so what happens? People no longer care about what you have to say. They're mad at you shining light on this topic and it angers them because they're like, you're ruining it, you're, you're ruining it for the rest of us type thing. So... For example, when I made that video, instead of people taking from what I said, like, hey, look, these people are saying doing bad and racist things to me. I literally had tons of dark skinned black women that had their own YouTube channels based on, you know, Asian men, black women try to bash me and basically say, well, that's just your experience. I'm a black woman. I live in Korea. I work with Asians all the time. They're not bad people. And it's like, OK, so you just completely dismissed my entire story, my messages that I'm showing you of how these people are talking to me to try to say, hey, look at my YouTube channel. Look, I'm married to an Asian man. And because my husband's Asian, all Asian men are perfect. They're not racist. And so I gave the example. That's as stupid as me saying, hey, you know, I'm a quarter European. So because I'm mixed race, that means white people aren't racist. Slavery never existed. There's no such thing as redlining and segregation. White people love black people. That's why they're in my DMs. Like, do you see what I'm saying? See how crazy that would sound? So, yes, yeah, like, people already decide whether they want to like you or dislike you. And if you want to get along with people on the internet inside of this whole J-Vlog community or YouTube community, whatever, you have to play the same game. You have to talk about the topics that everyone has decided for you already and don't go outside of that. You have to stay like a robot. You have to do what people want you to do and you can't talk about things that people don't want you to talk about. And even when it comes to like your stance on topics and whatnot, like for example, I talked about, you know, Black Lives Matter and that really confused a lot of black people because again, sheep like movement. The problem is not the idea of it because black lives do matter. 
But the problem is not supporting just any old organization that claims they are for us. Do your own research. And look at what's going on right now with these scams and scandals dealing with it. It's not that the police don't need reform. It's not that racial issues don't exist in the U.S. It's that we shouldn't be throwing our money blindly to just any organization that claims they are for us. Y'all don't do your research. And the whole idea of bullying people to say that they, you know, are supporting Black Lives Matter and they have to post this picture and do whatever or else you're not going to support this business. I'm not going to be friends with this person. You're going to unsubscribe. Now you're not getting real support. You're bullying people into faking support. All you're doing is helping people that are truly racist make money because now even although they don't care about BLM, they've been bullied into pretending like they do. And now because they've been bullied into pretending like they do, black people are going to be like, oh, they support BLM and stupidly support these businesses that are actually racist. Do you see what I'm trying to say? So I really wish that more people were able to think for themselves and not just do things because it's a trend or because other black people are doing it or because they've been told they have to do it or, you know, everyone else basically type mentality. Like, okay, because everyone else is doing this, I have to do it too. And I follow the way about politics too, like for black people, for example, like we're not allowed to think for ourselves. You have to be a Democrat if you're black. You're not allowed to agree with anything that Republicans have to say. You're not allowed to be an independent. You're not allowed to, you know, have opinions that you know agree with some things from both sides of it and that's the reason why you have these candidates like Hillary Clinton etc where when they run for office they say these super racist stereotypical stupid things about us because they've been taught all you have to do is show the black folk that you know a little bit about hip hop and rap music and you know a little bit of slang and they're gonna laugh at you and you're gonna get their vote that's all it takes from them, from us that's all it takes we're so easy and gullible to please and people don't want to hear that they're too busy focused on the bad Republicans or the bad whatever. And I'm not trying to make this a political war. Americans are so sensitive on this topic. Which is one thing that I do like about being in Japan. But it's like, it's the same situation when it comes to these cults and whatnot like on YouTube. Like, you have to do what everyone else wants you to do. And when you're not doing that, nobody wants to associate with you. And I find that's also a good thing here. Like, you know, people trying to collaborate with me. And I want to make this a separate video, but I wanted to talk about it here too. I cannot tell you how many times I've had black people, especially black women, reach out to me. In fact, some of your faves have actually tried to collaborate with me. People that have bigger channels than I have. They want to do a video with me. And then I feel like after they started watching more and more of my content and reading things that I had to say, they realized, oh, Ren is crazy. I don't want to collaborate with her anymore. I wasn't showing them the same love they wanted me to. They thought because they had a bigger channel than me, they had a bigger following than me, that I was going to be kissing their butt and I want to be their best friend. But my goal is not to get subscribers. My goal is not to use people to level up my life or my channel or anything else like that. I never want to compromise myself because my channel is me. It, I am my own brand. The moment that I feel like I'm doing YouTube and I have to fake a personality and pretend like I'm rich and pretend like my life is perfect in Japan and pretend like I love everything and I'm so happy, I don't want to do this anymore. Because if it means I have to be somebody that I'm not, I'd rather just not have a channel at all. I don't want that. And people don't understand that because the reality is, it's not just a black thing, but I'm talking about black people because this is my channel and I'm black. I find it for a lot of us white people too, I'm just talking about black people. We do whatever is going to make us money and get us subscribers. And the goal is to find other people that can help us get there. And I understand. I'm not going to knock you for what you're doing. But it's just not my thing. And when people realize, oh, okay, if I make content like her or if I act like her, I have her personality or I associate myself with her, I'm going to lose subscribers or people are going to watch my content or maybe in the future I'm going to get canceled because people are going to see she has a video on this topic and it's going to make me look like I'm racist, I'm bad, I'm ignorant, I'm whatever. And that's cool. That's why I don't want to collaborate with you. I want to stay, you know, myself to myself and be me. And that's why I don't follow people. Like I have people that I have like, you know, channels and whatnot and they'll pretend to be fake supporters. They'll like all my posts. They'll leave comments. They'll send me messages. They'll react to all of my stories. They'll leave comments on my YouTube videos. And then they'll like slide in my DMs. Some of them will, you know, directly, but others are hoping that because they showed me some love publicly that I'll be like, oh my God, I can't believe they commented on my video or they came to my Instagram and they followed me and that I'm going to reach out to them. Or what also happened is, let's say it's 50-50, they'll directly ask me, hey, I want to collaborate with you, I want to do whatever, I want to meet you, I want to be your friend. And really what they're trying to say is, I want you to help me grow my channel. 
And when I don't return that love and favor, they go from being my friend, helping, loving, and supporting me, to then talking trash about me. I've had people indirectly um, both say things that were bad about me, as well as people not defend me when people were talking trash about me in their comment section. And it's like, you know, you can choose to be upset and angry, but the way that I take it is, I'm grateful to God that he gave me the wisdom to see right through your phoniness. Because the way I see it is like this. If you're truly my friend, you should be defending me if you really are my friend. And if you don't find the need to defend me or to correct someone when they're talking bad about me when I'm not there, you were never my friend. And now I don't feel bad about not collaborating with you. Because at first, I was thinking to myself, like, am I being cocky? Am I full of myself? Am I feeling like I'm better than them? Is that why I'm not collaborating with them? Am I just, you know, maybe I have trust issues? Like, is there something wrong with me? And then when I see that, it's like, I was right all along. Something told me that you were a snake and you were trying to use me to help your own channel. And you were trying to act like you were giving me sympathy views and helping me by, you know, collaborating with me or doing a TikTok with me or doing a video together with me. And it's not just one person. And so it's like, you have to literally think for yourself, do I want to compromise myself for the purpose of getting views and followers? Do I want to pretend like Japan is perfect to make other people like me more, to be more, um, you know, cool to other people? Or do I want to be myself and tell my truth and share my real story and talk about my real life here in Japan? Do I want to compromise my channel and only talk about the good and positive things? And this is off subject, but it reminds me of a post that I just saw on a forum on Facebook. And somebody was getting upset inside the group and they were like, you know, hey, I'm new to Japan. And all I see is people complaining about Japan in this group and blah, blah, blah. And... Instead of people being like, well, this is real life, it was a bunch of people that chimed in like, oh, yeah, it's something with negative people here. People have bad experiences that get along, blah, blah. And it's like, no, maybe because these people here are being realistic and they're talking about the real Japan instead of the TikTok version of Japan telling you about how good McDonald's Japan is or how safe Japan is, etc. But these are people talking about real life and real situations and, you know, bad things that happen. It's not disproportionately talking about bad stuff. People are talking about real life. It's funny how these people don't feel the way about topics on America. If you look up topics on America on YouTube, I can assure you that most of it is going to be negative. But what you won't see is people like, oh, is America really that bad? All I see is negative stuff, blah, blah, You will rarely see somebody defending America and talking about how wonderful it is online. Instead, people will be like, oh, man, it's bad. Look at the gun violence and look at these bad... You know, they'll tell you the truth about it. But when it comes to Japan... People don't want to hear that. And unfortunately, foreigners help feed into the narrative that Japan is perfect because people realize it makes money online. Nobody wants to listen to somebody negative like me sitting, you know, that fat ass sitting in a chair and talk about, oh, Japan is bad. Look at this happening, whatever. People want to see the fun, beautiful, exciting side of Japan. They want to see how fun and handsome the guys are here and beautiful the ladies are here. They want to see all of the good stuff. And when you start showing them the bad things, talking about real life or whatever, you become bitter, you're a negative Nancy, you get canceled. Nobody wants to work with you or collaborate with you. And there's plenty of other channels that I can think of that have talked about similar things like this, and you notice the same thing. Their channel stops growing. And when you do anything bad like that, like you talk about bad things like that, people will find reasons to dig into stuff and cancel you. They don't like that. Like, even right now, my channel, I don't even have 5,000 or 10,000 subscribers or whatever as of the making of this video. And there are people that already hate my guts. And it's like, okay, you don't know me. You're mad at me because I'm sharing experiences that made me emotional. And you feel like I shouldn't be angry in a video for whatever reason. You're trying to dictate and control my feelings and what's labeled as a journal. You willingly clicked on a video titled... This is going to be about my feelings and my opinion. Then you get mad when I share my experience and my opinion because you feel like I've said too many bad things and that in order to make you feel better about your crappy life and the fact that you can't be in Japan, I should only talk about wonderful things to make Japan look good. Do you hear how crazy that sounds? And I talk about this in another video, but it's like, that would be the equivalent of telling, uh, you know, victim of R. Well, all you're talking about is how people have R'd you and M'd you. Talk about the good things that men have done in your life. Don't you have a father that, you know, brings home the bacon? Do you hear how crazy that would sound? You're essentially victim blaming. You're mad at me for sharing my story and my experiences. And you want me to take blame for it to make Japanese people look good or make Japan look good. And because I'm not willing to do that and I'm telling you the whole story and my truth, that angers and upsets you. There are people here that will listen to music, like from Megan Thee Stallion and Cardi B, calling you all hoes, bitches, everything else. But if I use those terms, I'm a woman hater, I'm a bad person, X, Y, and Z. And it's like, okay, interesting. 
you have selective anger because you've decided you just don't like me. So no matter what I say or do, you're going to be angry. You come to my channel for advice and information and because I don't say it to you softly and I don't say, well, if you really want to have a good job, you need a degree. Because I tell you directly, look, go to school. You need to get a real degree, get a job doing X, Y, and Z. That angers you. Instead of you being like, wow, she's helping me. She's telling me something that other people close to me didn't have the balls to say. She's pointing me to a legal website, Ministry of Justice Japan, not my own two cents, showing you websites where you can look at what recruiters are saying they're looking for in a teacher. And instead of you being like, oh, wow, she's right. She backed it up with facts. You're angry at me because you don't like the way I said something. And you're busy trying to prove me wrong and finding other little channels or even bigger ones that claim you can get to Japan by doing X, Y, and Z. How many people have that visa? How many people went through it that way? How many people had success doing that? There's always going to be an exception to the rule. My channel is not about exceptions to the rules. It's about giving practical advice that works for most people. And also keeping you competitive. Because getting a visa is not the end of your problems. What happens when you decide you don't like that job? Who's going to hire you with no relevant degree? Do you think that far? Because most foreigners living here don't stay at the same job for more than two years. In fact, the people that stay for more than two years are normally in the JET program. And it's because they have to based on their contract. So, uh, it's, it's just so much. <laughs> so much stuff to be said about that. But it really it makes me sad and angry at the same time. Because like in one sense... You feel sorry for people to get canceled for dumb stuff like that. It's like you can't redeem yourself. You can't make mistakes. You have to be perfect. But then at the same time, it's like you realize how isolated you become when you're honest. Like too honest. Because pe for people, honesty has to mean good. If it's not talking about good, if you're not being honest by giving like a good review, people get mad at you. Honesty is not okay when it's talking about bad things. If you're going to be honest, it has to be about something positive. If you're going to be honest, honest is saying, oh, Japanese people are so wonderful and Japan is so clean. That's a perfect video. If you're honest and you talk about how, well, actually, Japanese people don't clean things properly. They spritz a little bit of water, use the same towel to clean everything from the toilets to the handrails. And then that angers people. That's too truthful. People literally got mad at me for talking about how there's roaches in regular restaurants here. And there's no, like, you know, whatever you call those food inspectors. Look like how we have in the U.S. They don't do that type of crap here. That's acceptable in Japan. You'll see them everywhere in major cities. And busy, crowded restaurants. And instead of people being like, oh, wow, really? The anger gets placed on you. And I gave an example in another video how people got mad at this girl for complaining in a forum about how she went to a restaurant and they served her water that had a roach floating in it. And people were angry at her for reacting to it. And tried to brush it off as, oh, it's just a bug. It was an accident. You know, blah, blah. It's like, so she should have just drunk the roach or tried to sip her water around it? Like, that's how you all treat me, too. And it's really sad when you see this because, again, when people don't like you, they deflect. And so instead of acknowledging that what you said is true and that it's a problem, then they blame you. They were like, oh, you know, well, you got an issue. You're getting on camera and you're angry. And yeah, it's like, okay, I realize that people like listening to somebody talk about real situations in Japan. It helps really prepare people for what real life is like here. And for people that are living in Japan, you get to hear what somebody else's life and story is like other than your own. Because let's face it, anybody that's living in Japan, you know what I'm talking about. People that live here are very secretive about their personal lives. They don't share a lot. Whether you work together or watch these people on YouTube, they only show you the highlights of their life. And they only talk about the highlights of their life. Nobody talks about what their day at work was like, what their relationship with their coworkers is like. That's secretive stuff. Why? Because when you do what I'm doing, it's stupid. What's going to happen? Any employer that I want to have in the future, they can watch my videos, see what I had to say. Anyone that I want to date or be friends with, they can look at my content and decide, oh, I don't like this girl, I don't want to be friends with her. She's going to talk to me. You know, whatever the case is, it's damaging. I don't blame them for not doing it, but I'm saying that because of that, I realize there's a market for this. People want to hear about real life in Japan. I made these videos because I was inspired by somebody that showed me real life in Japan. I was tired of watching the bigger channels here where all they do is show you, look at this Pikachu whatever. Look, Japanese pizza. Look, Japanese people. Everything was the exact same video. I was tired of it. And I came across a small channel who sadly, she no longer does YouTube. I follow her on Instagram. But Alafia, she's the one who gave me the idea to do journals. I took it and went in a completely different direction, and I made much longer videos than hers. But I loved her journal videos. She referred to them as being Dear Life. 
and what I liked about her channel was she talked to you as though you were her friend. She would talk on camera like it was a journal, like how I'm doing. And she would tell you about what happened in her day-to-day -day situation, about, you know, a coworker she had a crush on, about a difficult coworker, about a boss, about a student, about dealing with racism. She told you how it was. And they were short videos. Not a lot of them. She didn't have a big channel. I think a lot of you ended up having maybe like five or six thousand subscribers. I don't know how many subscribers she had. She left Japan, deleted her channel. She does Instagram now. But that's another story. But my point is this. I liked her channel. Other people did too because it was so refreshing. It was different. And a sea full of white women are just like, oh, don't do this in Japan. Japanese people do this. Look, matcha. Everyone's video was the same thing. The same white girls talking about the same white crap. It was annoying. I was tired of it. It was refreshing to see not only a black woman, but see somebody talk about real life, their day-to-day -day circumstances. I wouldn't have cared what race the person was, but I'm not going to lie to as a black woman myself, it didn't make it refreshing. Here's something different for once. Because nobody talks about work here. It wasn't a thing. There were also way less YouTubers in Japan back then at that time as well. And so, what I really wanted to get at was, the part that really hurts me the most is that I see this happening with myself. Because I've literally seen people that have tried to reach out and collaborate with me, allow people to talk crap about me in their comment section, or allow people to get in their head about me. And I'm like, you don't even know me. So why are you believing a rumor? Because one person says they don't like me, I'm this bad person, I'm whatever. Instead of you doing your own research on me, getting to know me yourself... You've already decided that because this person said whatever, it must be true. I have no chance to redeem myself. You've already decided I'm an awful person. If you just pull out snippets of me arguing and complaining about something, then of course I look crazy and like a bad person. But you're ignoring the topic at hand. That's a fallacious argument. My favorite word to use. Do you ask yourself, why am I angry? Why am I upset? What am I talking about? What the title of the video is? What the topic is? Because like I said before... Who takes out their journal and writes, Dear Diary, today was the perfect day ever. All the Japanese guys look like Sasuke. I had the best sex with Inuyasha. Who writes like that? No. When you're writing in your journal, you talk about things that make you sad, that make you angry, that make you feel depressed, that make you feel unwanted. That's what people write about. Mostly. And sorry, just like in real life, you're more likely to talk about and remember in detail a bad experience. Okay, this is my real life. I'm doing the exact same thing. And sorry, I'm not purposefully just editing out the good stuff and telling you, I mean, you know, the good stuff as in positive and just telling you about the bad things. No. I'm telling you what happened in my day-to-day -day real life. And if it mostly happens to be bad, then so F and be it. If you want to listen to sunshine, cupcakes, and rainbows, and positive, you know, shit about Japan, you can watch literally any other YouTube channel beside my own on that topic. And you will find that. Because it makes money. Everyone wants to do that. I'm not knocking them for it. I'm just saying I don't want to compromise myself for the sake of making money. It is easy. It's fun to do it. It is easy to go inside of a store, buy some cutesy things, and laugh and give. Oh, Japan is so wonderful. Pikachu. Of course, anybody can do that sort of stuff. I'm not blaming you for doing it. I'm just saying it can't be me. Do I have some videos like that? Yes. Will I make videos like that in the future? I most certainly will. It makes you money. It makes you happy. They're easy to make. But my goal is to help people. I wanted my channel to be what I wanted to watch before I came to Japan. I wish somebody told me about the stuff. Because when I had questions about dating Japanese men, there was no content. There were no videos on F boys or dating advice and giving you free game. All of the girls in Japan... Will pretend like dating in Japan was easy and wonderful. Or they would just tell you, oh, they're not going to date you because you're black. That's all you got. Those two extremes. When it came to how people talk to you, don't expect your Japanese boyfriend to have time for you. It might take him one month to get back. People, you can literally, I'm not bullshitting you. Go to Japan Guide. Look at forums of questions that girls have asked. Do it right now. Japan Guide. Type that in. Look at the forum and look at questions about dating Japanese men. I remember reading a crazy article about this girl who was talking about how some guy she was dating was taking literally weeks to get back to her. And everybody in the comment section was saying, oh, that's normal. You think it's bad that you waited a week? It took three weeks for him to get back to my email. And I'm like, 
Okay. You all are literally bragging about the fact that you're being played by F boys and you all don't realize this and they're brushing off oh Japanese salamon, they're so busy. They're stressed up but No they're not. It's the same white girls and even white men repeating the same stuff over and over and over again. No Japanese person will tell you that that's normal. They don't talk to each other like that. It don't take them no three weeks to get back or three days or even one day. They reply back hours after you send a message when they care. And never more than eight hours. If they care about you, they're going to talk to you during their lunch break, when they wake up in the morning, and when they're on their way home from work. You ain't going to be waiting no days for a reply back. That just means he's not serious about you. But would you see that before my channel? Nope. Almost every channel out there, every forum to this day. I'm still a part of these groups and forums. I read the stuff that goes on inside there. And I don't even bother comments. I just be reading it and I be like, wow. All these people lying to you, giving you bad advice, misleading you. Nobody correcting them. Everybody's in agreement. My goal is to inform people, to advise people, to share my experiences of what happened to me and what I believe and what I do. And people don't like that because it bursts their bubble. Let me get my phone. It ruins their idea of what they believe Japan was supposed to be like and what they think Japan is like. And when they see somebody talking about Japan the way that I do, it hurts them because they wanted to believe Japan is this mythical, you know, or mystical, won wonderful place and everything is cupcakes and rainbows. And when they see somebody saying that Japan, um, excuse me, bit my tongue, that Japan is not cupcakes and rainbows, then they get angry at me that I become the bad person. You can listen to music calling you a hoe and calling you a dot and talking about how you need to shake your ass and be a whore and this and the other. And that's empowering. But then if I use those terms and I'm misogynistic, I'm a woman hater, I hate black women, you can laugh, hoot, and holler when I talk about Asian people or white people. But if I get on black people about their bullshit, then I hate black people. I'm a negative bad person. Okay, whatever. So, all I'm trying to say is, People don't want to forgive you. People are going to cancel you no matter what you do. And that's why you're better off just being yourself instead of trying to, you know, paint yourself and be this perfect person and be whatever sort of image, society, or YouTube, or whatever these little cliques, because they're all cliques, whatever they've decided you have to act like and be like. Because you'll do all of that, and the same people that you're trying to impress and be best friends with, they'll turn on you anyway, and you just wasted your time, put on a fake persona. I would rather everyone hate me, this cliche generic saying, hate me for being who I am, then love me for being something and someone that I'm not. I spent my whole life trying to be fake and phony and pretend like I had never had, you know, any sort of mental health issues and not in the way that my family tried to paint it. But I had depression. I had anxiety from being sexually and physically and mentally abused. But of course, those abusers like my sisters, Talisa, Diana, and Sonia tried to paint it as though I had anger issues and I was bipolar and said the other to cover up the fact that they were sexually and physically and emotionally abusing me. That's the version that they wanted you to hear and see. And I spent my whole life trying to pretend like I had a good relationship with my sisters because I wanted people to believe that my family was perfect. We were all together. We all got along. And while I'm busy trying to protect their image, they're destroying mine. I'm not doing that with my YouTube channel. You can hate me all you want to. I am always going to be me and nothing else, nothing more, nothing less. You don't have to like and agree with everything that I say. That's cool. I'm not here for your support. I'm here for me. And the people that get it, get it. And those that don't, won't. You don't like what I have to say? Don't like the way I'm saying it? Then bye. Be gone, bitch. Watch somebody else's channel that doesn't call you a hoe. And when you get mad at me for calling you a hoe or anything else like that, I hope you don't have Meg The Stallion in your playlist on Spotify or Apple Music. I hope you don't listen to Beyonce or Rihanna. I hope you're not a Barb or a Barty fan. Part of Barty gang or whatever. All of those women call you hoes, bitches, thoughts, etc. That doesn't offend you. You'll shake your ass to that shit. You call people that on Twitter. But then if I do it, I'm a bad person. See what I'm talking about? How selective. You pick and choose who you do and don't want to like. You pick and choose who can say bad things and who cannot. You are not going to do that with me. I will always be my own self. I'm crazy and I'm having a mental breakdown on camera. For speaking my truth and sharing my story and my experience. But you're not crazy for clicking on it and getting entertainment out of it and wanting to watch it. I don't know who you are. Remember, you're here on my channel. You chose to watch me. And unlike you, I can forgive people. I don't think I'm better than other people that have made bad mistakes. I believe all you have to do 
it shows that you are sorry, you've repented, you've changed, you've educated yourself, and you've moved on. I don't get no sort of sick thrill or high off of holding your past over your head and making you feel bad for something that you've already said you're sorry for. And going back to the James Charles situation, before the more recent one that's happened, when now I'm continuing to make the mistake of talking to underage people, without him even being able to speak for himself, people instantly decided, this man is bad, he's predatory, we're going to all unfollow him, we hate this man, death threats, everything else. And it's like, how are you as adults, mostly adults, or even teenagers in high school, you're incapable of realizing Shouldn't we wait until this person speaks and defend themselves and answer what's really going on before we make up our own opinions and judgments? And as someone who's been a victim of that and guilty of being judged for stuff that was not true, I know firsthand, I talk about my, and I'll never stop talking about it, my experience at a broad international school and other schools I've worked at too. People love to say, oh, if something keeps happening to you or if everybody's saying whatever, then you must be the problem. And I said this before on uh, Patreon, whoever made up that saying is the most toxic, evil person in the world. And they are definitely the problem themselves. Because you most certainly can have bad luck and constantly be around bad people that constantly frame and blame you. You wouldn't blame an abuse victim and say, well, if everybody keeps R on you, then maybe you're the problem. So people mistreating and abusing them is not their fault? Do you hear how crazy that sounds? So, yeah, it just, it really, it really hurts you. Because you want to defend yourself and you want to explain. Like for example, I know I'm on my YouTube video, but the reality is the damage had already been done. Most of the people that, you know, my last job had spoke to in Osaka, they're never going to watch that YouTube video. They're not going to watch the whole thing if they do. They're not going to listen to what I have to say. When you have an entire school of people that are saying these bad, negative, evil things about you, especially since they were supposed to have been an Islamic school. Why would you not believe them? Everybody is saying the same thing, right? It's really hurtful. And it's really sad that grown people are incapable of thinking for themselves and understanding the need to have both sides of the story. And the crazy thing is, when you try to give both sides like how I did, people pick that apart too. I literally went back and explained my entire story so that everything would make sense. And what people got from it was, Oh, well, I would have let you go, too. And it's like, you're not getting it. That's not what happened. I quit my job. And it wasn't until I quit my job that old things started getting brought up to make it sound like they let go of me instead of me quitting. If that's how you want to treat your friends, that's cool. But this is a professional business. This is a company, a private school. How was that not unprofessional? Crickets. Instead, the blame gets put on me. Oh, well, you shouldn't have done whatever at work. And it's like, that's besides the point. That happened almost a year ago. I quit almost an entire year after that incident. And I didn't even get ridden up. I was not reprimanded for that. They actually gave me a raise after that in a new contract. So, of course, like I said, internet experts, armchair experts, whatever, their goal is not to listen, to understand. Their goal is to judge you. Their goal is to find reasons to dislike you. They don't want you to say bad things about Japan. If you say things that people don't find to be flattering or good or if it's not a safe, bad topic... People hate you for it. People got mad at me for saying that I wasn't going to be, you know, joining the whole Black Lives Matter movement. And I made it very clear in my video, I don't mind people supporting black businesses. Or honestly, at first, I didn't really feel that badly about the organization itself. But my issue was, I found that a lot of black people that are here in Japan, they weren't even marching for the right reason. They saw it as a photo op, an opportunity to make a YouTube video, an opportunity to get attention from it. And nobody hurt me out on it. And what do you know? Here we are years later. And now, who owns the business? White folk. Who's being accused of mismanaging the funds? The black woman that started it. There's a lot of mess going on. I'm not going to bother to unpack all of the crap inside this video. And my point was, not to say that you don't support the movement itself. But I don't support the organization. I view them as two separate things. And it's sad that black issues always have to get tied up in politics because that didn't happen with the Stop Asian Hate Movement. It was not tied to neither Democrats nor Republicans. But anytime black issues come up, it's always tied to extreme leftism, which isolates you. And then you have black people that identify as Republicans or independent speaking ill of the movement. And it's like you shouldn't be mad at the movement itself. It's the organization that's the issue. There are issues and black lives do matter. 
and we do need police reform and we do need re-educating and it's just such a difficult you know messy topic but i hate the fact that you can't speak your truth you can't give your own opinion and people actually listen to you because i'm not saying that because you give your opinion people have to agree with you but by doing that you get canceled people don't want to associate with you anymore because it's like oh you hate black people you don't support them you're a sellout you're whatever and it's like no because i do support them i'm not going to be a sheep and march for things and go to organizations for the fun of it this has no impact on Japan. Same thing goes with what's going on in Ukraine right now. And this is another sensitive topic. All these Japanese F boys got, you know, Ukraine flags in their bio and in their profile and everything talking about stop war. And they're F boys. The irony in this. Whenever it's popular or trendy to have a certain political opinion, people jump on the bandwagon and they're for it without doing any research on their own. They know nothing. But because everyone else is doing it, they do it too. And when you think for yourself, people don't like you. They want you to be a sheep. You're supposed to do whatever everyone else is doing. If everyone likes something, you have to like it. Everyone hates something, you have to hate it. That's true about a lot of things in life. You are simply not allowed to have your own opinion. Opinions are only okay... When they share it with the majority. You start getting all taboo. And start thinking and doing things. That most people don't believe in or don't do. Then everyone starts to hate you. People want to be your friend. When they think they can make money off of you. And when a relationship will benefit them. But when they realize. Oh being friends with Ren. Doesn't mean she's going to do a YouTube video with me. Then you lose interest in me. Being friends with Ren. Doesn't mean she's going to pretend like Japan is perfect or I'm not going to talk about the topic that you want to do and I'm not going to make a video sitting down together with you and discussing whatever. Like People want to use me and when I decide I don't want to be used by you, then not only do you talk crap about me, but when you hear other people saying shit about me, you don't defend my name. And it's like, yep, that's exactly why I didn't do shit with you because I knew you weren't a legitimate friend. If you're really my friend, I shouldn't have to do YouTube videos with you for you to have my back and defend me and care about me. If I was really your friend, you're not going to unfollow or unsubscribe from me because I decided that I wasn't going to do content together with you. That wasn't the basis of our friendship, was it? You see what I'm saying? When you're no longer of value to these people, they don't want to be friends with you anymore. And same thing goes, you know, I'm talking about the j Vol community in particular right now. When I decide that I don't want to collaborate with someone, they stop being phony. They stop leaving comments. They don't watch my live streams anymore. They don't do any of that shit anymore. They stop. They distance themselves from me. Because their only purpose in pretending to like me and support me was because they thought they were going to make money off of me. And when I decide, I don't care that you got 100,000 you know, subscribers. I don't care that you got 50,000 followers on TikTok. I don't want to collaborate with you. That's not my channel. I don't hate you. It's just not my thing. I don't trust you. And your brand doesn't fit mine. You're busy talking about how wonderful and perfect Japan is and highlighting how lovely and safe it is. And my channel is talking about reality. When I have good things to say, I talk about it. I've talked about my favorite snacks, my favorite food, my favorite place. I've done good videos on Japan. But we get enough of that. Nobody cares about what I like. I want to share my real experiences with people to help people. I want to advise people on what they should do and help them with situations that I had trouble finding information on. That's the purpose of my channel. Excuse me. It's not to make Japan look bad and make America look good. That's not what I'm saying. Or make myself look good. As I told you, if I really hated Japan, I wouldn't be here. I made a whole video talking about things that I liked about this country. But people have selective hearing and reading. You pick and choose what you want to listen to and what you want to believe. Because you've already made up in your mind you didn't like me. And now you're showing your true colors. You were just using me. And when you realized I wasn't going to allow myself to be used. And that it was one-sided. Then you stop. That's why I didn't follow you back. That's why I didn't subscribe to you. That's why I didn't bother to watch any more of your content. I took a peek at your stuff and I saw it didn't line up with my beliefs. With my channel. And I was done. You wanted me to be crawling to you and want to work with you because you have a million subscribers. And I didn't want to do that. I wasn't going to play the token black friend for you. Because I saw how you treated other people in Japan. I saw what happened when other people got canceled. And how quickly you were to join and jump onto the bandwagon and decide, oh, I'm not going to associate with them anymore either. I don't want to be that person because what happens when I get canceled? Where are you going to be at? You ain't going to be nowhere in sight because ultimately you were never my friend. 
It's all about branding and image. And that's cool. And because of that, I don't want to play that dirty snake sly game with you. Do it with someone else. So, I'm done. I ain't going to say any names. Y'all probably already know some people I'm talking about. And some of you probably are here watching my video right now. Yep, it was definitely about you and other people. It's not just you. Trust me. So, it really hurts, especially when I see my own people do it. But I've had white people try to do that with me too. And it's like, it's not that I hate you or I'm just being paranoid. I don't want to work with anybody. But rather... I don't want to work with anybody that's not truly my friend. If you're not truly my friend, I don't want to do content with you because I don't like the idea of people just I don't even want to be friends with people like that. I don't want I don't want to hang out with you, date you, be friends with you if it's apparent to me that you are using me for publicity, using me to grow your own channel, using me to help with your channel. Like I don't need sympathy subscribers, sympathy views, I don't need that extra exposure, whatever you want to I know it can make things easy for you, make you more money, but like I said, if making more money means compromising myself, I don't want to do that. I would rather my channel grow slowly and I don't get a million subscribers until my 60th birthday. That's fine. If that means that I get to maintain and be myself and be realistic and talk about what I want to talk about and just be me. And people don't like that. Like I said, people don't like me saying and doing certain things, but they're okay with other people doing it. If I have an OnlyFans that dress like a hoe, it's bad. But you'll sing lyrics from Beyonce talking about being on Demon Time and having the OnlyFans. You'll listen to Ruby Rose. You'll listen to Meg Thee Stallion. You'll listen to Cardi B and subscribe to theirs. But if I do it, I'm bad. I'm a horrible person. I'm a hypocrite. I'm a whore. I'm everything else bad. Selective hate. You're offended by my words when it comes from my mouth. But you got these girls singing in your ear and you're paying them money for calling you a bitch. That's cool. Selective hate, selective hearing. So I don't have time for that mess. That's why I said I don't even mess with females like that. It sucks because I wish I did have more female friends, but I have a very small group of female friends. I don't hang out with girls like that. And that's the reason why. It's too catty, too bitchy. And you find that a lot of people, sadly, they just want to use. And that's the reason why, even with my Japanese friends, I literally have one friend that's aware of my YouTube channel. She might not even really be aware because I've, I've just briefly talked about it. That's why I don't even bother to collaborate with them. I don't want to be friends with people that are using me for any reason. You might be oh, your channel small, whatever. But no, trust me, for a lot of people, they do feel like it's something to give. And let's be real. Anytime that I'm dating somebody, even, people get nosy. They try to look through my photos to see if they can find who I'm dating, find their Instagram account, etc. Message my boyfriend. They do weird crap like that. I imagine the same thing would happen if I show the people that I'm friends with in real life. It's not because people want to support you. They want to be messy. People are watching you more than you think. You don't need 10 million subscribers for people to be concerned about your personal life. Willing to pay to find out about your life. Or to sabotage it. I've seen it happen to other creators. So, that's it. Um, again, like you can't control what people are going to think about you. I believe people deserve forgiveness. And I believe in redemption. And I don't like the idea of this extreme cancel culture. And going on witch hunts to find reasons to hate and dislike people. And... I think it's stupid. I hate these dumb clicks that exist within the realm of Instagram and YouTube and TikTok, etc. It's like, think for yourself. Don't just do things because everybody else is doing it. And be able to judge people on your own instead of being like, well, if everybody hates them, they must be a bad person. I mean, don't get me wrong. Sometimes there can be some truth to those things. But it's like, think for yourself. Listen to what people have to say and hear both sides of every story. Don't just believe people because you like that person that said it. And even for me, like, you know, do your own research. I wish more people had the ability to think like that and it really hurts again like when you see people that you really liked or admired and looked up to or people that you consider being friends with like for some of these girls I thought about I was like you know I really would like to be friends with this person and then you find out later on like oh you were only trying to be my friend because you wanted to use me and when you realize I wasn't cool with doing collabs and I wasn't interested in that but I was like oh I'll be your friend but I don't want to do that then suddenly you lost interest in me. You, want, you want nothing to do with me so that hurts, but again, it's part of being an adult, it's part of being a creator, an influencer. It comes with the, you know, whatever. So, yeah, just explain that to you guys that um, I've definitely had opportunities to grow my channel. I've had opportunities to collaborate with a lot of different people here in Japan. There are a lot of J-Vloggers that actually watch my channel, and I'm really shocked by it. Because people that have left comments and even have, like, sent me emails, I was literally, like, fangirling around my like, Oh my god, I used to watch you when I was a teenager, and now you want to collab with me? And then when you look at it and you think about it, like... Does this person really want to collaborate with me because they want to be my friend? Or is it strictly business and they want me to be, you know, really phony with them and give this polar opposite personality so that their fan base can be judgmental towards me and 
pick me apart, etc. Are they going to even have my back? And the answer to that is no. They're not really trying to be my friend. They're trying to use me. And so, again, of course, there's some benefit I would get from it. I would make more money. I would get more subs, etc. But I don't want people like that. I want people to come to my channel on their own naturally that like me as a person. I'll collaborate with somebody when I feel like it aligns with my channel and when I feel like I'm being with someone who's more genuine. I don't want to be with somebody that has a channel that's about having this fake over-the-top personality and somebody that, if, I mean, if you can make videos where you only talk about positive things in Japan, I can't see you as a real person because unless you're completely blind, you definitely see a lot of the bullshit that I'm talking about here on my channel too. I'm not the only person, so you ain't got to have the same bad, crazy stories that I do. But you're an effing liar if you pretend like you have no idea about the bad things that go on here. So, And your refusal to talk about it on your channel, to me, it makes you not real. If you're going to be promoting tourism and talking about the wonderful things in Japan, why is there nothing bad on your channel, too? Shouldn't it be balanced? Like, that's the way that I see it, so it's whatever. Like I said, do what you want to. I'm just explaining why I don't have interest in collaborating with these particular people. I make positive videos. I will make more in the future, too. I'm not bashing it entirely. I'm just explaining that I'm not going to compromise or change myself at the expense of, you know, making money or keeping subscribers. You're not going to see me making apology videos and, you know, trying to do damage control for being canceled. If people want to cancel me, they can do it on their own. I'm never going to cancel myself. I will continue to make content, continue to make videos, continue to speak and, you know, be myself. And if you don't like me, that's just on you. So I'm done about an hour and 10 minutes. So thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. Sorry for ranting so much. It's had a lot on my mind and I really just felt strongly about this because after like uploading that video I found that that was a perfect example like when people don't like you they they find reasons when people don't like what you have to say when you tell the truth and it's not what they want to hear they find reasons to dislike you and pick you apart you become too successful online people find reasons to pick you apart like for example even like with modeling and whatnot instead of people being like oh wow that's cool you got a visa for modeling like I wish I had that whatever instead especially again my own way my own race black women they want to pick you apart and you know diminish what you're doing and make it sound like oh it's not a big deal it's not whatever my friends do I'm like okay that's good for you like I didn't say that I was Naomi Campbell or some shit like you see what I'm trying to say like they don't want you to feel good about what you have you get a boyfriend is he really your boyfriend you know, it's like everything that you do is not enough people want to find reasons to dislike you they want you to doubt what you have they want you to feel bad they want you to feel like okay maybe you got something that's a little good but your life isn't going to be as good as mine type thing so and this is from me I'm always talking about bad things in my life but if I say anything good about myself people gotta you know question like it can't be good so it's whatever thank you for listening thank you for watching if you enjoyed this video please leave me a like leave a comment down below if you want more content like this please consider becoming a patron you can get more content from me and learn more about my personal life on patreon it's only five US dollars per month I have tons of story times and videos about things that go on in my personal life with working studying dating and um, you know my family in America etc it's five US dollars per month you'll get access to over 100 YouTube videos there um, otherwise as I said I'd appreciate it if you would like this video leave a comment down below subscribe to my channel if you have not already as always you can follow me on instagram and twitter at comic 95 i have a facebook and i'm sorry i have a snapchat and tiktok at comic the savior and a facebook fan page at comic 95 the savior and i have a blog at comic 95.com so thank you so much for listening and thank you for watching and i hope you watch another video bye